So Gambit lovers, here's how it happened. I was on Leechess the other day, about a week ago, preparing more content when I got a message from my fan. A challenge from your YouTube video, viewer. And I'm like, I'm working on creating more content, cannot play right now, I'm sorry. I had actually played this guy a few times before, I had won. He goes, okay, call me whenever you're free. But if I play a bush gas gambit, will you play? And I'm like, I cannot pass up an opportunity to play a bush gas gambit. And so he says, just a second, and probably takes that time, presumably, to prepare, to check out some stockfish recommendations, and to see what he's going to play against my bush gas gambit. And so we start playing. Bush gas gambit, for those of you not familiar, is to offer the pawn once in this context, ready to uh, transpose to some Stafford-esque ideas. But more importantly, really, to offer the pawn here. And actually, initially, he played castles. And to which I responded, take the pawn against me. He said, I don't want to take. I said, maybe it'll go on YouTube. Maybe the game will be so exciting that I will decide to post it on YouTube. And he accepts my take back and plays the Stockfish top recommendation, of course, of knight takes e5. So you'll note all the blunders Stockfish <laughs> points out in the opening. But the point of the bush gas gambit here is this move looks so good because it's attacking f7 twice. Let's say we castle to protect it. White plays d4. White is doing fantastic. Pawn up and everything. But we play here next c6. This insane move. If you guys are not familiar with the bush gas gambit, you have to check out the video right above me right now. But the point is, if they play knight takes f7, bishop takes f2, launches a bunch of completely crazy lines, lots and lots of fun. But my opponent was prepared to play bishop takes f7 check, and after king over, to find the top move of the engine, which is very, very rare. It is here, well, it is after taking on c6, to find bishop to h5. This, this has so many more plays than the first time I recorded this video. This has really caught fire in popularity. But the point is, if the bishop comes back, bishop to g4, almost trapping the queen, white needs to play f3, but after knight takes e4, uh, black is actually just completely winning. With queen to h4 check coming next, white is completely lost and is soon to be checkmated, actually, if they take this bishop. With queen h4 check, g3, check, uh, check, check, and uh, checkmate coming over here. So, but my opponent knew what they were doing and played this very advanced move, bishop to h5. It is the engine's top choice. The point of bishop h5, it's to guard the g4 square. So here white's actually up two pawns, and my king has moved. So things are not looking good, but I am prepared, and there are still much more fun ways to proceed. So I still have a lot of pieces active, and I'm going to try and take advantage of that. So I play your queen d4. This is still actually preparation for me, um, although not for this match. Castles, queen back to e5. So queen back to e5, we're attacking this bishop, force it to move. You'll note this is still like plus three, but my prep here is to play now h5, another Stafford-esque idea. So we're switching our target to this h2 pawn, and I'm ready to play knight g4 and look at some pawns over here to attack. So of course, now if you play bishop takes g4, I can recapture, and my rook and my queen will try to capture on h2. My opponent played c3, the best move in the position. Again, I assume they were prepared. Knight g4, g3, forced. Otherwise, I'm playing queen takes h2. So c3, they're, they're trying to play d4. If they can get this in development in, it would solve a lot of their problems. And now here is when I kind of forgot my preparation. And uh, I actually played knight takes h2, which is a double question mark move. So the point is if king takes h2, which would be an even worse move. But I play here now h4. And now my rook and my queen, the power of them are really just unleashed. So for example, d4, I play takes. Uh, let's say king, king moves somewhere. And now the point is this queen will, I, I believe, somehow maneuver herself in this general direction. Or is it still lost? It is still lost. White well, can actually still hang on. <laughs> so, knight takes h2, not a good move by any regards. But d4, it's still a difficult position to defend, to navigate. So queen f6, now attacking the bishop twice. So my opponent takes the knight instead of my bishop here. Of course, I have no plans to retreat that bishop and just keep attacking. And now is when my opponent gets a little bit too greedy. I can make all the blunders in the world, but if they slip up one time in the bush gas gambit, look at that evaluation swing from plus nine to minus five, minus six. Uh, because now white has no more defenses. White needed to know to play g4. 
H4, G4, deny the pawn trade. Don't let me open a file. Pawn trades means opening files. You don't want that happening to your king. Here, white's already up one piece. They don't need a second piece to be able to win this game. And here, my attack would really kind of die out. But they took the bishop, allowing for a fun checkmate to happen. So takes G3, double check. So double check means you have to move your king. You can't play pawn takes G3. You're in check twice. So king takes would allow just check and mate. My opponent in the game played king g1, and after queen h4, queen h2 is uh, unstoppable. I believe it only says double question marks because, yeah, I wanted to give the queen with queen take to d8 check. So that was a fun game. My opponent had me. My opponent had me if they just played g4. So we go to the next game. We played another one. Another bush gas gambit duel. What's going to happen this time? Am I going to find an improvement? He plays the same line. It's the same stockfish recommendation. Queen d4, attacking f2. He knows to play bishop h5. This is a very, very rare move. But can the bush gas gambit survive against stockfish prep? It is 1-0 so far on a, on a quick checkmate that was due to a blunder. But, I mean, I was playing a very good player. It was a blunder after finding actually a lot of good moves. It was just a lot of pressure, really. So here I found something different. Instead of knight takes h2, I played a better try, which is knight takes f2. Knight takes f2, and what my opponent should do is after rook takes f2, bishop takes f2, king takes h4. So I basically trade some things off there. This bishop was about to be blocked anyway with d4. But after h4, I get to keep attacking, and we will see this position in a subsequent game. So I won't say too much about it. But my opponent played here d4. Thought maybe, you know, they can counterattack my queen here for a moment. However, it is quite the blunder. Because unfortunately for them, after knight takes d1, they cannot take the queen. Because that pawn is pinned to the king. And so here, I am actually just up a queen. Very fortunate for me. Bishop takes d1 is check. But here, I am just up too much material. So I was able to win this game. Look oh, look how much this queen eats. So it's going to eat that pawn. Take there. Another pawn, another rook. Let's get our king out of danger. Eventually, we're just able to yeah, take the rook. Take a lot of stuff. Um, and win the game. So... That was after knight takes f2. My, my opponent fell for this with d4. I'm not sure if this position has occurred before. No, that was the first one. So after this, my opponent says um, they need some time to prepare, actually. And there was there was actually a lot of time between those next two games. But we played another one. Uh, let me enter into analysis mode here. Sorry. Enter into, this is the analysis board of our third game. So I'm 2-0 and so far. We're going to go down the same line. We're both sticking to our guns here, except now after knight takes f2, my opponent correctly plays rook takes f2. And so I need to take that rook right away, or else d4 is coming and blocking my bishop and everything. So takes h4. We're gonna, gonna keep trying to attack. They played c3, which really isn't a helpful move unless you're playing d4. So they haven't gotten time yet to bring out these pieces, and I'm able to hopefully, hopefully try to keep striking at them. Queen g1. They, I'm sure they, I'm sure he had prepared this because I think he played this yeah instantly. Look, he loses one second on his clock. Queen g1. It's good preparation. It's a tough move to find, but you're covering key squares around here. So after h takes, h takes, I don't have rook h2 check. Anyway, queen back. I'm trying to play now bishop g4 using my pin right here. My opponent plays king e2. Right, so they're still not able to develop, and that's kind of the goal. Bishop e6, bringing that out. Knight a3 is an error. So knight a3 was against my idea of bishop c4. So the point is, if my opponent plays d4, which is what they want to do to be able to develop their pieces, but bishop c4 check, it's an annoying check. Uh, so my opponent here played knight a3, but it's a blunder. I mean, this position's hard to defend. d3 was what they needed. It would have been apparently a more helpful developing move. But so now the point is I slide my king over, and now my rook's ready to join the fight, fight and my rooks are going to do really, really excellent on these files. So my opponent finally gets in d4, but rook f8, attacking here, queen g2. I, I understand why my opponent didn't play bishop f4, even though that's the recommendation. It's because g5, that bishop's going to be forced to move. However, Stockfish is saying you can counter gambit. You can gambit that bishop back because now my king's unsafe. <laughs> so crazy, crazy stuff going on. But my opponent tried to hang on. And now here, here I missed it. So it's actually in my favor. It's actually almost minus five. I saw this move rook h2. It's a brilliant, brilliant move. But it distracts the queen so we can take here. And now the point is, uh, like, let's say king over. We go here. We're ready to play rook f2 check and win the queen, if not uh, the game, right away. So I saw that. I just thought... Uh, <laughs> What move I played was it would actually be better, which was bishop to h3, and now coming back here, bishop g4, 
And so the point is I put the queen in a pin. So now you can't take it because I would win your queen. And now I'm finally attacking f3 a bunch of times. And after bishop f4, what I'm going to do is trade. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to play g5. I'm just going to win the bishop and win the game. Super easy. Rook h2. I'm just going to take everything. But I missed just queen g4, a counter pin. And my g5 plan doesn't work at all. So now this is a rough situation because white now has a big center that they can apparently hide behind. And here we were just kind of in a blitz out, uh, except my opponent had much more time, 122 to 11 seconds with no increment. So uh, a crazy finish to this game. I think they had a, a win here when my king got unsafe. Uh, but credit to them, they played this very, very well. And here I, I'm, I'm lost and I actually ran out of time here anyway. So credit to them. He was so excited. He beat me. Did I win now? Oh my god, I can't believe this. One more. We got in one more game um, where we are both prepped to the max. It is two to one me. This is maybe the tiebreaker round or something. Um, and so we are playing one more. Oops, a little bit of spoiler there. Okay, so one more game. Bush Gas Gambit against Stockfish Preparation, against several, several moves of preparation here. We're going down the same line. I get Nate takes c6, d takes c6. We're able to open up our bishop queen. All the pieces are doing well here. Bishop h5, covering g4. And now, and now, I play <laughs> a crazy line. I played here, bishop takes f2 check, which it doesn't actually work here. It doesn't actually work because I don't have access to the g4 square. However, <laughs> the defense is very hard. Um, and so it's plus six. But after king takes f2, knight takes e4, uh, you can pause the video and try to recommend a square. I'm not sure if this has been played before. But so someone has at least fallen into king g1. Oop, didn't even play it. But queen d4, queen f2 is checkmate right away. And so white does need to be precise in finding the right square for their king. There's a few that fall into some crazy lines. But my opponent actually played one of the better ones, which is king e3. It's not one of the better ones. It's, it's at least it's second. King e2, king, king f1, king e3. The, these moves all look a little bit dangerous. But the point is white should be able to bring out some pieces and defend uh, at least for a moment until they can get some of their queen side into the game. So bishop takes f2 is not a sound sacrifice. However, king e3, we had a very, very fun game. So queen g5 check. It's not the best because my opponent is actually playing everything right. King takes e4. This king keeps coming closer and closer, so can, can I get it? King takes e4, It's it's he finds the best move. Check. King d4. So, I mean, the king wants to go backwards, but this is the only backwards square and allows me to take the bishop at least. But I'm down two pieces. King d4. Another check. Okay, the king's able to come backwards. Check. D4. He's a, he finds every single square correct. King there, here, king over. Everything was right. Queen takes D4. He now brings in the queen as a defensive piece. Of course, I do not want to trade queens. Check. Check. And so here, he actually could probably have drawn the game by just going back and forth. But he makes, again, just one slip up is all I need. Plays king to B3. Uh, trying to retain those two extra pieces. Uh, and... I believe, yeah, so, so the way out of this would have been queen d4, and now it's telling me king b4 is best. It, it, I mean, it's it's that hard for, like, like these stockfish recommendations, man, it's tough. You're threatening queen c5 check. You're threatening queen c5 check with the sport of your king in order to trade off the queens, in which case your king's probably safe. If there's no queens on the board, king safety's not too big of a concern. But king b3, bishop e6, I'm able to win the enemy queen, uh, and so this position's just winning. b5 is a clever little addition. Because now I get to take like this, where it's check, I'm taking the bishop, and my queen's going to just be a monster, just clean up lots of stuff. So you can count all the things my queen takes. It's taking a queen, it's taking a bishop, check, it's taking another bishop. Okay, this is completely winning. I take a knight, etc. Uh, take a rook, we'll take another rook, and we'll check me. So that was my bush gas gambit duel on a prepped line. Uh, I'll revisit here some uh, analysis, actually in this variation. So knight takes f2, so, so this would be my actual recommendation. Bishop takes f2, It's you can do it for fun, but it's a little bit suspicious. If we want to be legit, we should play this line, queen d4, queen e5, to give us another target. c3 is correct by white, knight g4, we're attacking this pawn on h2. Now, when we trade on f2, we can play h4, and we can really keep coming after them. So queen g1, I think is it's a very tough defensive move. White has queen g1, and I believe bishop g2, and other than that, I think every other move will come down a lot, especially if you analyze this with uh, uh, Leela, LC0. 
it will favor this for black more than stockfishes, at least. So queen g1 takes takes, queen f6. Uh, and here, queen f6 is correct because d4 is coming anyway. And so, you know, now it's not coming with tempo, but we're able to play bishop g4. We're able to play king g8, get this rook out. And after king e2, even better than bishop e6 is the move b6. So bishop a6, you remember with bishop e6 trying to get to c4, they were able to guard the c4 square. But bishop a6 is going to come. We can slide our king here. We can slide our rook here. And I still believe that black can have a lot of fun in this position. So with 16 moves, 16 or more moves of push, gas, gambit, prep on both sides, I think this is what it would come to. Um, and I just thought that was a really, really fun test of my favorite opening. Uh, you can leave your th thoughts down in the comments below uh, about the bush gas gambit uh, and and about this variation. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. I really appreciate all the support and hit the bell for notifications. And peace out, gambit lovers.